Hey, everyone, Dave here. Welcome to Impulse Playing with Reality. So this is essentially a successor or just a second title from the same studio that made Goliath. I really loved that particular experience because it truly really opened up my horizons on viewing certain group of people and listening to their stories, which were very well explained and understandable. This time around it seems like we are diving into the ADHD topic, which I don't think I'm as much familiar with, nor I know people who were diagnosed. But it's always cool to experience something new for the brain, if it's with the reality or the other one. <laughs> So Impulse Playing with Reality is an MR visual experience where you're gonna discover couple stories coming from the people that were dealing with ADHD syndrome, their experiences and how they manage life through all the struggles. Quite a change up from the previous experience because this one is happening mostly in MR. There are some VR sections but they are mostly treated as an intermission to the other sections of the whole presentation. In terms of the tech itself, I really enjoyed it and the whole playing with space, your environment and you being engaged in what's going on really made it immersive and that you actually take a part of the storyline. I think the execution could have been a little bit better, mainly because I started having visual problems in the other half of the game. If it's with the screen tears, pixels just jumping in the lenses and quite chaotic situations that I don't think were necessarily intended. I also don't think I connected as much with the message. Maybe it's because at times it was too much, which I think that was the goal, but then the whole plot I feel like was leaning into psychology instead of something more understandable for the broader audience. Either way, it's a very decent experience and I'm happy that the same developers are back on board. Because per usual, I wish we would be getting more of this stuff nowadays and it's definitely a good time to do so, primarily due to the MR that changes the game. Let's go to the gameplay. Mmm, a big red button. That's not suspicious. Well, I know this is a mixed reality experience, so... Extremis. <laughs> That's an interesting presentation, <laughs> even with the text. To be somewhere else. This is my new table, by the way. <laughs> to start, you need to go backwards. The easiest way to slow down is to stop. You're out there, but I'm in here, right between your ears, at the center of it all inside the hungriest organ. Come join me. Listen carefully. Take a deep breath. Squeeze. What? Hold. And release. A blink is a comma in your thoughts. You can't control it, it just happens. Same again. Inhale, squeeze. What is this meditation BS? 
Cine. Easy does it. And relax. I don't see. Inside of a blink, time slows a little. Gives you a chance to catch up. Okay, well, this is too far. Squeeze your hand nearly there. Deeper now. Hold. You're here. Well done. You can let go now. The human mind's just fascinating, isn't it? There is a universe of information around you. But without thought, there is only darkness. And even with some thoughts, there is still a lot of darkness. Enough of that. Let's do a thought experiment. A game, if you will. In this game, one blink is a unit of time. Within this tiny instant, an idea, a decision, an action, perhaps. Actions come about through dialogue between the systems of your brain. Around you, is the amygdala, the ancient brain. All fight and flight keeps you upright and alive. But for many, it's an exhausting, anxious voice and not really cut out for the times you live in. Jesus! Fear, pure muscle, adrenaline, and boy, can it panic. Don't get too close. This gangly web is the prefrontal cortex, the new era brain. Cool, calm, collected. It plans ahead, precise but slow. Useless at sports. Every instant, decisions must be made. It's a chore or a game. These are the steps. Your sensory cortex hoovers up oodles of information every microsecond you're bombarded it's down to you to sort this mayhem absorb the information using your senses on your left suck it up okay first of all squeeze suck ew i wonder if this is scanning my environment and then squeeze suck Creating something new, but it's definitely not the one that I have, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Squeeze with your right hand to process the input. Match like with like to make sense. Then spit it out. The mm. hell? Release with the right. Uh -huh. Absorb abstract information and turn it into something sensible. Easy. Refresh your ideas to move to the next level. I'm not quite sure what's going on even. Ah, there's some guidance here. I mean, it's kind of weird, but an immersive mystery experience, which doesn't happen quite often nowadays. Well done. Not your first thought, then. But what about when time isn't on your side? Oh my god. Uh -huh. 
Pupils dilating. This is what it feels like to be alive. Thrilling or terrifying. Either way, vital. This feeling could save your bacon. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my god. It's like those lines are not accurate nor precise, but maybe that's the point. And they change as well. to reload. Overwhelm, too little time for everything. Agitation, dissatisfaction. Take action to fill the void. What the hell? <laughs> oh, wow. Like, I can't focus. <laughs> The time doesn't help at all. Oh wow. <laughs> Maybe it's a test if I actually have ADHD. <laughs> Oof. Okay, thought experiment over. Some games are impossible to win. I'd be lying if I said you had a chance there. Some systems are rigged. What is the feeling behind the action? How much control do you think you really have? Here you are, back in the room. An anticlimax? Nothing to see here. What happens in the brain stays in the brain. Or does it? Look around. Just stuff. Notice anything unusual? The more you look, the more you see. Decisions, routines, associations, memories, obligations, and all the outcomes happening at once. Let's get on. It's all a bit too much, isn't it? Your mind is everywhere. But where are you really? To see where you are, you need to be somewhere else. Tune in. Seeing myself in the third person as a character, what would happen in this and what could happen in that? in my mind, create alternative situations. Huh. 
didn't start out just committing crime. It just evolved over time. The windowsill. To have to get across this and to get onto where all the easy pickings are, and, you know, seeing myself in that tiny gap with that wind hailing around me, with that massive fall, to having to get the stuff back across that, and the danger, you know, the fucking danger that we put ourselves in. It was one of my pastimes just to climb up onto something you know, and be looking down. I would climb to the top. I used to get off on people being scared. People being scared that I was going to fall. OK. I started getting wobbly legs because I'm, so, I'm starting to get a bit scared, yeah, but then my brain's going, you can do it, mate! Four stories high. But if I fall there, I'm gonna die, but I don't think like that. And I think, oh, wicked, I can make that. You just don't see you getting through it. It feels like a way out. It's finally all going to stop. There was something there pulling me towards the danger, but I didn't know it was there. I didn't you. Know it was there. Maybe I can. Humans. It's never easy, is it? The chaotic lives of four very different people Omar, Errol, Leanne, and Tara. All driven to the edge. A precipice. But how did they get there? Reaching the tip of a tree. Climbing a tree and getting to the top is a scary thing. Our family broke up. I spent a lot of that time in the house of my own, and, and they had a skylight there and, and, a, and a window that took me out onto the roof. Always be out on that roof, just sitting there and just, in my mind, there's an escape route. Five metres across, and it's maybe a 70 foot drop. It was just always in my head thinking, I, I want to jump that, I could jump that, I could jump that, I have to jump that. I have a vivid memory of me doing it and looking down and my laces are untied. You know, it was snowing and if I trip, it's just straight down. I have to jump that. Place what? There used to be a tune back in the day, in the 70s, and I can't remember who sang it, but it goes, I love the sound of breaking glass. Do, 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 do. You know, me and my mate, we used to bunk off school and um, went into this car park and smashed every single car in the car park. <laughs> For no reason, no reason. I remember having nightmares about it, though, as well. I remember having nightmares. I keep going, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I'm never going to do that again. Never going to do that again. And then the next day, I would do it. Never going to do that again. I call myself wild. I am wild. I can see the danger in it now, but back then, it was like I was set on fire. But it was good fire. <laughs> I, I see the world differently. It glows differently to me. I don't see people. I just see myself all the time. I just see myself in this world trying to work out what level I'm on. 
bit like Super Mario. Yeah, yeah. Get all the stars. You get a mushroom. You level up. A bit like that. If I do something right, you know, I'm leveling up today. And I'm up the road and I'm like, I want to jump over the wall. I want to walk on the wall. I want to climb over that car. Like, I always have to be the winner. It was like I was controlled by emotions. I would feed off other people's energy. Jesus. <laughs> that if they got excited about something, I would be more excitable than them overtake theirs and take over and spoil things. But if we were playing with like pretend swords and stuff, I would go too far and accidentally hurt someone. You just want to like chase that feeling um, and keep doing what you're doing because it feels good in the moment. But then when you get out of the moment, it seems really stupid and you realise what you've done and it's all gone horribly wrong now. It's all gone horribly wrong now. Well, the label was beyond parental control. I was just a mad kid were not going right for me and I couldn't sort myself out, I would throw the living wobbler. My mum used to give me licks and I remember feeling really angry and helpless when she used to hit me and that. Years later, she said to me, if she would have done anything differently, she wouldn't have beaten us. But she didn't know what to do. I used to get chased home by skinheads from school and I was scared. But then when things got around that, that I was too wild for them to do anything to, oh, he's a lunatic, he's a madman. That did save me from things that happened to the other kids. And they put me in Denham Court. Um, I was young. It was exciting, but frightening. It was described as a home for naughty boys. Exciting, but frightening. So far I'm enjoying it as an experience. I think I wish I would actually have more interactions going on because it's a platform after all. Within my life, there's been a lot of violence around me. Do we have something? Oh, there are subtitles. The hell? But I wonder if it's gonna like break the immersion. We'll see. Found myself just hanging around the streets on my own, climbing around building sites, just committing. Yeah, no, because there's so much going on visually that you can kind of focus on the voiceover. So this is going to be the first time I'm actually going to opt out of that. <laughs> and just city crimes. We you know, birds of a feather flock together. We ended up, you know, little groups of young kids who were just feral and you know, just trying to get by it. That's too much, mate. He's just absolutely running reckless. You know, making the world our playground. It would be disused buildings, big old metal work factories. 
kept holes in the ground and chemicals. We felt comfortable in that chaotic state. Well, I felt like that's where I was meant to be. And that's where we felt at home. take on a lot of the criticism that other people would give me. If their response to whatever was happening was to call me names and say, oh, he's so stupid, sort of thing, or you're horrible, I would keep hold of those insults. I would call myself those names. Instead of being as bubbly and fun as I was, I would make myself a bit smaller and make myself quieter, remind myself not to get carried away by not getting started in the first place. OK, you know... Remind myself not to get carried away. I can the force now. I used to hit myself. It'd just feel like a ball of, like, lava coming out of a volcano. Like, can't, there's no stopping that. that. That redness in me just took over. The rage inside me, full of hate. Just pure hate, yeah. I'd just hit myself in the face and stuff. Headbutt things, like, that's the only way to stop the feeling. You know, and it wouldn't even necessarily be anger, and I can recognise that now. It'd be sadness. The rage inside me. Dopamine seeking better. Restlessness. Negative self. Emotional dysregulation. Self focus. Be strong in response. Tension towards anger. Risk. Time life. You can't go for a bit of explain My daughter's dad suggested that she had ADHD. Eventually, I saw it. I got to see the signs of it in my daughter, and everything started to add up. Oh, that's me. There's something about seeing yourself in someone else. It's funny how it switches from MR to VR constantly. I could recognize the pattern. It's exhausting before you even begin. It's, it's like if I'm in like a dark room and I'm holding the one object or thought that I'm trying to hold onto. And then in the darkness, out pop all these different like images and memories and thoughts and activities and stuff. I'm like spinning and like looking around and all these different things are just appearing and I can't control it. It's trying to latch on to that one thought. Because I'm aware of so many things, how can I only focus How can I only focus on one? think that if you aren't paying attention then you don't care. I care about too many things. I care too much. We'd pass a building site, especially when it was say no trespassers or dogs patrol this or whatever. That would be yes to come on.
I'd be swinging, thinking of ways of putting my life in danger. It wasn't that I wasn't scared. I was scared, but I was reckless. And the recklessness overcome the scaredness. It's an intense focus of what's going on and a disregard of everything else. It's not that I'm searching for adrenaline, it's that adrenaline and things like that would get me away from how I'm feeling without it. My mind is just everywhere. You know, it's a million miles an hour and it's in all in different places. It looks like it's being focused issue and it is, but the root cause is the thinking part. Oh my god, I'm losing a sense of where I am. You know, like when I look back at it now, it, it feels like showing off to say, look, there's me. Here I am, I exist, I'm viable. This momentary feeling of vertigo, your body simply must react, wants to. Choice comes later. Vertigo isn't the fear of heights, it's the knowing that you could jump, that you might act on that impulse. Back somewhere familiar. <laughs> Sitting there in a the cell, but being able to have a load of paper, I was able to create my own world. I had the great source material. I had them my whole life. It relied upon a lot of self-reflection. It allowed me to delve deep, but I could actually relay it and, and put it out into the world. So I started to write. Wherever I don't have to fit in, I don't. My son is probably the only person that sees me as Leanne. He's around every mood of mine. We're like a battery, we just plug in together and we're off, like static energy, like did 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 I can be how I need to be. I don't mind telling you, I've just celebrated one year without trying to kill myself or self-harming, which is unreal. I am putting myself back through uni. Don't really have that many grand ambitions. I just kind of want to be there for someone as a person that maybe I didn't have when I was younger. I used to go out every night of the week and I used to put my name on the list so that they'd call me out, everybody would clap. I would have to go up on the stage and perform. I would have to do it. I'm having to find other ways to feel some kind of fulfilment, some kind of contentment, some kind of like, here I am. Here you are. Can you recognize the patterns? You've got things to do, people to see, stories to tell, a need to be somewhere else. Decisions, actions, or reactions. How you'll react is likely how you know how to react. I do wish that I'd been a bit more calmer. I, m I might have been able to notice things more, but then again, even if I did notice things more, did I have the savvy of brain to go? Action or reaction. Real life is messy. Impossible to take it all in. Time. A lot of the time is always, they're just making excuses. I'm going to die one day, I need to live. Blah, 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 whatever. I just want to get to the end. Action 
or reaction. Focus on the here and now. The difference between them is a blink. A moment to catch up. To slow things down. You have to stop. What's in front of me? It's like dimensional triangles. But I mean, the whole performance is just going to the gutter. Maybe my headset just overloaded with vision and stuff. Okay. So that's pretty much the end of the experience. First of all, as a mixed reality experience, amazing. Like, I don't think I've seen anything like it so far. Maybe because nowadays I don't necessarily search for that, but as an official release, it's pretty great and I wish the experiences would go towards the MR more because it feels very immersive that way. I think the execution might be a little bit better because in the other half, I started having problems with lenses, vision, like screen tears, everything that's possible. It was happening. I was not saying anything because I was focused on the story. It didn't necessarily explain me what ADHD I feel like is directly. It was mostly psychological terms and some kind of ideas. In my mind, it's something about the attention span or just overactivity of the brain. However, in comparison to the other title, which was Goliath, this is rather unclear and it didn't really broaden my horizons. I do like they went with MR and then switch into VR. I think it would be better if I would have more control over the platform situation, like mini quests to find the goal. But then maybe the experience would be too long or too hard to accomplish. But overall, the idea was amazing with presentations just floating around you and then my environment itself was kind of transformed because the app scanned it and then translated it to what it needed to present this whole experience. Overall, I liked it. Decent length. Maybe the technicalities could be a bit polished out, but at the end, it's a pretty nice app and I wish, as always, that we would be getting more of this stuff because it's definitely worth experiencing. 